Good morning. It's February 3rd, 2021, um, and I'm continuing my Celtic calendar slash astronomical calendar series of videos, and it will be the um, cross-quarter day in about 10 minutes. And I'll start out by showing this particular bed, which I featured in my previous video. Even though I planted it late in the season, it's coming along quite well. And we've enjoyed some of the komatsuna and salads. I haven't harvested the kale yet. And then back there, are the um, Brussels sprouts and then I have left some of these Chinese mallow in the bed which have come up from seed they have a very mild flavor and an interesting kind of um, creamy texture when you chew them I think today we'll have some of the mustard greens, which are these here. This is one of my blueberry bushes, which I have in these large pots. And um, surprisingly, this one is already flowering. Hopefully we'll get some blueberries from this one. It's a little early, I think, so hopefully it won't freeze. Another thing that's flowering is the winter honeysuckle. And um, this one is probably at least 10 feet tall and maybe 15 feet wide, I don't know. But um, the flowers are very fragrant. And the Rufus hummingbirds enjoy these, as well as the bees. In this video, I will show you some work I've been doing in the woods behind my house. And I've done a lot of pruning. There was quite a bit of dead in these live oak um, and some of the cedar. Um, there's still a whole lot more that could be done, but um, anyway, I had a huge pile of branches out front, which I chipped. I rented a chipper and um, created quite a pile of mulch from the branches and I've been making these trails through the woods where I have tended to walk anyway so this is a really good way to um, create a path which eventually decomposes but the cedar in particular is very slow to decompose so it makes a great path and um, I'll take you down this way where it merges into this rock ledge and this is a nice sitting spot here on the ledge. I've done some pruning of the dead foliage on the palms here. These are palms that um, resulted from me just throwing some seeds out that I thought were bad. <laughs> so I just threw them down the hill here and they came up. Um, so I have a whole grove of Texas sable palm here. Oh, there's the sun coming up over the hill. And here's a little olive tree. 
I have some other olive trees here. And a little Canary Island date palm, which has been there maybe three, four years perhaps. Um, this is a um, rattan vine, which I had up closer to the house, but they can be quite rampant. So I've planted this one on this male cedar which makes a good trellis. The male cedars <clears throat> create pollen, so when I'm thinning trees, I generally try to take the males out and leave the females. Um, and the females provide a lot of berries for the birds particularly the robins, which we have in abundance during the winter, particularly this winter, I've seen so many. And then the cedar wax wings. And a lot of other birds eat the cedar berries as well. And one thing you can do to improve habitat for birds and other wildlife is to diversify <clears throat> your plantings or what grows in a natural woodland like this. And down there I've planted an anaqua tree. Um, here's a South Texas tree that so far has done fine for me. It's a um, great lead tree. And down there is a cedar elm. Over here is um, another South Texas plant. Um, gosh, can't remember the name of it now. It's a shrub. I'll think of it. <laughs> I'll label it on the on the video. Here's a um, mimosa, which is not native, but I wanted to be able to enjoy this particular variety of mimosa, which is a dark pink color from the bench up there at the top of the hill. And looking down on a mimosa is the ideal way to observe one, I think. So hopefully that will develop well here. Otherwise, down below, there are a lot of um, black persimmon, mountain laurel, um, there's a hackberry over there, and otherwise just cedar, or juniper, as it's more correctly called. And then we'll go back this way, and I'll continue with more path in a moment. So here's another path. I'm uh, passing this Eve's Necklace, which is a native flowering tree, which also is protected by this wire cage, which I have to do to keep the deer away. and. I also have these piles of branches um, which extend in rows down the hill, which I originally um, placed there to keep the deer from eroding the hillside so much because they would come up and down the hill and it was in pretty bad shape. And I think originally there were probably goats or cattle um, in this area, which eroded the hillside. And then the deer continued that process. So 
this has helped and the brush piles also provide a lot of habitat for lizards, insects, and so forth. This particular Spanish oak tree blew over, gosh, I think about 10 years ago. We had a hurricane down in the Gulf, and we had very strong northeast winds because of the way the um, hurricane winds cycle around. And that direction to the northeast, the winds just came through here. And this was a hollow tree anyway and it just blew over but I put this wire around it which protects it from the deer and it has re-sprouted <clears throat> so we still have a tree here and the uh, Spanish oaks are somewhat endangered because the deer eat the um, seedlings and also if a tree blows over like this if it dies from drought the the main part of the tree or blows over in a storm like this one did then the tree often tries to re-sprout from the base but if the deer continue to keep it eaten down then it's just going to eventually die but I find that the Spanish oaks do, even when they die back from a drought or something, they um, will often re-sprout if they have a chance to do so, which um, is the reason for the wire, which is not terribly visible here, but um, the wire also protects other plants coming up in this area. There's a yopon and some silk tassel, and there's some um, mist flower, there's a little Texas ash, which I planted, and I've installed this um, barrier around this little tree, which is a um, hackberry. So continuing here, I have a bench and a view into the woods. And the brush pile is not very sightly, but it is functional and um, it will eventually decompose and reduce in size, so I'm not worried about it. The main thing I'm doing here is um, increasing the diversity of plants um, so that we have more different kinds of insects which feed different kinds of birds and other animals as well as the berries that the um, and seeds that the uh, different plantings will provide. And another path. I had a lot of wood chips. So, and I'll have more in the future. <laughs> The cedar trees, um, or juniper as they're called, um, create a lot of dead wood as they grow, and the wood tends to hang on. Um, and I walk through these woods quite a bit, so <clears throat> the dead wood can also be dangerous. It can poke your eye out if you're walking through and come across a branch like this which is very sharp. So I've trimmed a lot of these up and just to make the woods more accessible. And then here's another enclosed area 
which I um, enclosed with this hog wire, which I had on hand anyway, and it's protecting this big yopon here, which is native, and there are also some silk tassel, which is this plant, and lots of other things. There's um, a little cherry tree, a little black cherry, which came up from seed, and lots of Texas aster, um, cedar sage, um, white mist flower. There's some mahonia in here. Um, quite a few things that otherwise wouldn't be there because of all the deer. And you can see the difference. It's more pronounced in the growing season, but you have inside the fence and you have outside the fence. And there's really nothing here other than the sedges, which the deer don't eat, and a few grasses, and the soto. And here's another enclosure over here. Yopon, um, mist flower, silk tassel, greenbrier, which is this, and um, so all these things are protected from the deer, and I think it actually creates more forage for the deer when you have these little islands of protected vegetation because whatever grows through the wire, they can munch on. Here I have a um, Mexican white oak, and down here is a cedar elm in this little enclosure. So there we have it, the cross-quarter day at Imolk, February 3rd, 2021. See you next time.